Hi, my name is Shiva Rajagopal. And I'm Richard Kwan. And the name of our project is Drums Anywhere. The main focus of our project is so that you can have the actual sound of drums anytime you want when you and your friends randomly decide to have a jam session. Okay. So here you can see we have our two boxes. So these boxes are the main heart of our drum sets. And they contain a flex sensor and a microphone. And with these two sensors, which we'll explain in more detail later, you can effectively recreate the feel of making drums, drum sounds. So this is just for a quick demo. So that gives you a small overview of what our project can do. The Velcro straps are mainly so that you can put it on any kind of stick-like object that you want to. Uh huh. So you'd lay a stick through there, strap it on. Exactly. So yeah. say okay. we say you were. It's Friday night with your friends, and you want to bang out a new song that you've been thinking about. You have lyrics for the song, but all you have for the drums are a couple rulers. Well, I want real drums. So I simply put this through here. Oops. And I'll go ahead and strap it on pretty tight. And all cool. of a sudden, my ruler's making actual drum sounds. Yeah, okay. And so, the, so, so you have a you have sampled sounds. Yes. So we have um, two sampled sounds that are on the microcontroller's um, onboard memory, and if you look at the display screen, it actually shows you which um, sounds it's currently outputting. Mm -hmm. Those two are the only sounds we have on there right now. Rev two will have more. <laughs> okay. Um, but the Velcro that we include is also large enough such that if I want to put it around three fingers, could you help me? <laughs> now, my hand's my drum. Uh huh. So, so it's a very versatile yeah. kind of thing. So in in the end, then in the in the I mean this this version is sort of spread all over the tabletop, but you could have this be a small module. It could be wireless, but it mm -hmm. need not be. But you'd have it so you could play drums on your lap or wherever exactly. you happen to have it. Okay. All you require is some kind of surface. Uh -huh. And these boxes have been 3D printed and they're very sturdy. So you can bang these as much as you want, as hard as you want. And the other cool thing is there's actual amplitude response with it. So with soft hits, you get a softer sound. Mm -hmm. And it roughly corresponds to human hearing. So it's log like? Yeah. <coughs> nice. Yeah, and every time you hit one of these boxes, the amplitude uh, that the system is taking in is shown on the LCD, so you can kind of get some kind of idea of what kind of amplitude you're putting in. So okay. for a soft hit, this one's around 150. For a hard hit, we're up around 180. Okay. And, yeah. It, it has a pretty wide dynamic range. Okay, so you're... Okay, cool. Yeah, and the, as you mentioned, these this could definitely be cleaned up a little bit. Right now, all of the op amps that we're using to filter all of our signals are only using one side of the package. So, so you could miniaturize this. Do you intend to do that? We do. Um, in our second revision, we plan to add some sounds into the program memory of the microcontroller because there's a lot more room for them. We also plan to make this a little bit more compact. You, as you can also see with our box, it's a little bit large for the hardware that we have in it right now. Because it's, 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 there's a lot of space, yeah. There's quite a bit of space. Mm -hmm. So with a little bit more um, Efficient, yeah. A little more optimization, we could have a very compact package that could be even more conducive to, say, just putting on any random thing. Because right now we have two Velcro straps mm -hmm. for each box. Mm -hmm. We could probably miniaturize it down to one. Right.
how many uh, uh, how many different sensors do you think you could hook to one microcontroller and make it go if you wanted to say put one on each foot and one on each hand could you do that do you think um, so that's actually a limitation of the um, AT Mega twelve eighty four microcontroller so the current setup that we have is we trigger external interrupts and the Mega twelve eighty four has three external interrupt ports. Although it you could use the pin change interrupts. Yes, you yes. could use pin change interrupts and then you could get as many as you want, but mm -hmm. but you could do at least three. Yeah. And so the you other could have a drum you could have a drum a foot for a bass drum, for instance. Yeah. And the other limitation is since we're since the microphone is sending an analog data and the Mega twelve eighty four has can only do one analog to digital conversion at a time. We are limited to the time that it takes to switch the um, analog to digital converter a little bit. So your your time resolution might become unacceptably large with several units. With and, several units. And you figure with drums you have to be within ten milliseconds yeah. or so, where it starts to feel laggy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, uh, Strikes me that this would be a place where a little bit of uh, external ROM might be nice. Absolutely. For 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 some big data sets mm -hmm. or, or or flash RAM. Absolutely. So another possible improvement we could make is perhaps having recording, so that you could record, say, one measure of drums and then just repeat it. So you, so you have a drum machine. Is exactly. Because the one advantage that this has over, say, a drum machine or drums mm -hmm. or a virtual drum set is that you don't have to have like any extra hardware here. This just you put it on your hand and you play it. Right. You don't have right. to have any kind of large setup yeah, for uh -huh. it. And mm -hmm. but you still get the sound of legitimate drums. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you.